Originally, we were all meant to have Endwalker in our little hands by now, but due to delays, we've had to wait a little bit longer. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing if you're like me and you like to reminisce a little bit from time to time. And I'd like to sit down with you today and talk about what I liked, um, what I didn't like. And uh, of course, you're more than welcome to let me know your thoughts as well down below. This is a very off-the-cuff video. This is something that I originally wanted to script pretty hard. But when I really sat down for it, I think it's more genuine if we actually just talk about the things that we liked and we didn't like. Um, so I suggest you pull up a seat, get a nice little warm drink or something, and uh, let's just have a conversation like this. Which is mostly from my end, I guess. So, when... When Shadowbringers first released, I'll be entirely honest in saying that I'd fallen out of love with the game. And I think that's something that I wasn't necessarily okay with admitting just yet. Because when Stormblood basically came around like the halfway point, I was not enjoying the game. The story was okay. Um... But it was just okay for me. It wasn't necessarily something that I was thoroughly going for. And by the end of Stormblood, I was just doing a couple of raids here and there to have something to do in the game. I wasn't enjoying my time that I was logging in. I, I felt like every single subscription that I was buying, for Stormblood at least, was some sort of waste of money. Like, I could have spent that on something else. Even though it's not much, I, I don't get the full 14 euro subscription i get the 11 euro one the entry one level one and i every single time i did raids that's what i logged in for that's what i renewed my sub for so that when shadowbringers released uh the group that i play with we went into that we went to raiding uh, the group kind of fell apart because we all wanted different things from raiding at that time so when we got there um and like shadowbringers had a lot to offer for, for me at least it was a fresh, like a breath of fresh air. And with the raids as well, um, I had to go look for, you know, a new group of people to, to raid with because uh, I wanted to start completely fresh with a different group of people. And so I got to meet a lot of people and that was really fun. Constantly looking forward to raid as well was, was really, really fun. So by the time that I got there, I had something to keep me going. Not just that, when it came down to the story of Shadowbringers, I was thoroughly invested. Um, I'll be entirely honest in saying that ever since then, I've kind of soured, but that's on a lot of the characters, but that's mostly because of the community response to these characters, and it's, I'm, I'm just getting tired of seeing these characters everywhere. So, that's my, that, that's the way that I experienced it. In terms of job changes, there was a lot to love all around. Um, admittedly, I was looking forward to getting back into Machinist, and Machinist, I felt, was kind of shafted. <laughs> quite hard to be entirely honest with you i was not enjoying machinist whatsoever um but crafting was simplified but it was simplified in a good way it was fun again um sure the old days of heaven's word where crafting took skill are gone and let's not, i will say there's a lot of people who say like oh hey crafting no longer takes skill Let's not sit here and pretend you didn't spend like 19 simulation on beta.locust.net or whatever it was, replaying the same macro over and over again to see if there would be a slight like quality improvement. That everybody did that. And most of it was like hasty touch fishing anyway. So, in any case, gathering was also something that I really, really thoroughly invested myself in. I was in Stormblood, I was already kind of invested, um, but not nearly as invested as I was in Shadowbringers. So, then a couple of like a couple of months pass and what i'm starting to notice is my love is waning again and it's with these and i will say like it's mostly because of the fact that stormblood really soured me that i'm might be like a lot more sour on final fantasy 14 but then um the the story came out for um Elidibus, and that whole story aspect started to Develop. I might have gotten his name wrong. I'm not sure. If I'm if I'm wrong, I apologize. I'm really bad with names. But like, so that came out, and then I was thoroughly invested again, and then nothing happened again, and then I was invested again, and nothing happened again. And I will say that right now, I am not at all interested in the story of uh, Endwalker. The only thing I'm excited about is the fact that they've got that whole thing going on of like this is the final chapter of this saga. 
So that's the only thing I'm excited about. I have a fair, I had a very similar feeling about Kingdom Hearts 3 when that came out. I wasn't excited for the end because I kind of knew how it was going to end. It was always going to be this specific end. And with the things that the interviewers uh, or the, the developers had said and the writers had said in the interviews, I knew how it was going to end. I felt like that was going to be sort of how it ended. How they went about it was very, very different, but I was looking forward to what are they going to do after? What is it that Final Fantasy XIV is building towards with Endwalker that is his grand reset that is going to be really exciting? You know what I mean? So that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm not looking forward to the boss fights. I, I don't enjoy the villain. I don't enjoy the, his companion either. I... I don't like the 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 stereotype that um, Xenos has whatsoever. I don't like Fen Daniel's stereotype of I'm basically a god and I'm going to go flamboyantly weird. It's it's like you're this weird combination of like what would be a good uh, comparison. Like I almost want to say Kefka, but Kefka seems like the most obvious one, but he wasn't so you know I'm gonna try everything that I can. It, it feels like a weird combination of like a fate fate stay night or whatever the fuck it's called and like that gilgamesh combined with kafka it feels very much like that but in a body that we know and <laughs> i don't like any of it <laughs> i i like kafka i don't i i like gilgamesh and I, <laughs> I, i'm sorry um i i like the the original character that asahi was because he was just a really unlikable bad guy um, which I think is a very good quality to have because we have too. I think there are too many villains these days that we're meant to like, you know, like we're supposed to like every single villain and sympathize with them. And, oh, look, they've got so much reason and they're so sad. Like do, th th that was one of the reasons why I soured so much of the characters afterwards is like people reacted so weirdly to Emmett. Like he was some sort of like character that they super fell in love with. But do they kind of forget that this man has committed several genocides according to the story just to make sure that he can get his friends back? Like, yes, I've committed millions of murders, but I was sad once. Like, how does that make it okay? You know what I mean? And and I, I, I'm very much more of a fan of the villains that we're supposed to dislike. You know what I mean? I don't want I don't want the Jokers. I don't want Emmets. I want evil people who have power who are actually like this is somebody we should fear you know what i mean i want to have feel that threat xenos is not a threat he doesn't feel like a threat he's never felt like a threat he, they haven't done anything to make him special the fact that emmett just at the just with that finger snap suddenly made ishtola come back which like was very difficult before he suddenly just did that just to humor us like that felt like very impactful that made me go like oh shit not just like oh hey that's very nice of you but also like you have that power crap you know what i mean like that that was the way that i felt so over the course of uh, the game um that's that's how i started to feel about the character so when it relates to endwalker i <sighs> The, the new aspect of the new... Uh, I, I, I'm assuming that everybody who's watching this video has seen and played the game, so... The aspect of Grahatia be suddenly becoming a sign of the Seventh Dawn, I don't feel like he adds much value per se, but that's yet to be seen, I suppose, because we haven't seen much of him yet. Um, but I'm not particularly excited or thrilled about it. Um, I wasn't a big fan of him as the Exarch to begin with. Um... Not that, not that the, like, it wasn't as much of a mystery. If you played the story and if you played all of that, like, it wasn't much of a mystery whatsoever, right? And you didn't need to be spoiled. If you played the game, you knew. So, <laughs> while all that was happening, um, the Crystal Exarch kind of developed more into a character that we're supposed to like and supposed to sympathize with, but I just felt myself resenting him more because it's like you're so obviously trying to tug on my heartstrings that it's, it's, no, <laughs> I want to determine whether or not I like you. You don't get to determine that. I don't care how many sandwiches you make me, <laughs> which was a nice gesture, I suppose. But, you know, so Endwalker's story is not something that I'm particularly excited about, except for the ending and, and how that grand reset's going to come about. Of course, I might change my mind as I play, because I didn't think Shadowbringers was all that all there in the build up either. So... The fact that because they couldn't tell you much to begin with because everything was so quickly spoiled but um 
maybe that'll change, as I said. Like, Endwalker's story could just suddenly pull a 180 on me, and suddenly it's like, it's the best story ever, because at the end of the day, I did not go into Shadowbringers expecting something to like. And the fact that it became one of the best stories that I'd ever, ever played, yeah, that's telling. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's something that I feel like really contributes to its power. So, what else is there to look forward to in Endwalker? Not a lot, is there? <laughs> Like, not because of the fact, like, they're adding a couple of new things, like the Island Sanctuary. That's something I'm very, very excited about because, again, it, the concept of it feels very appealing. It's very hard to say, like, what I'm excited about because of the fact, like, I don't know in, in inherently what it means. I don't know what the the Iceland, uh, Iceland? Iceland. Island uh, Sanctuary necessarily entails yet, but that's the concept I'm excited about. Um... Really excited to try out Sage. Reaper, not so much, but Sage kind of has my curiosity. Um, the main thing that's, that I'm really excited about to finally be happy to have in my grubby little hands would be Melviera, finally. And um, a lot of people have asked, and th this is something that I address in this video, I suppose. The main reason um, why I am so super excited about Melviera is because of the fact like I've played all of the Ivalice games that are available to me. There is a mobile game that I haven't played yet, but I don't think that's all that relevant anymore because it's discontinued, if I remember correctly, and you can't get it anymore. So I've played all of them um, from War of the Lions, because Final Fantasy Tactics, the original, I just prefer to call War of the Lions now because Tactics Advance and Tactics Advance 2 have taken it into such a different direction that f calling the original uh, Tactics feels kind of like disingenuous. I feel like War of the Lions is a much better title for it. Um, but I played all those. I played Revenant Wings. I played 12. Um, they're excellent games, right? I was really looking forward to Fortress uh, when that was coming out or when it was like rumored because I followed the rumors very closely. And the, 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 the Viera have always been a part of the, the story, essentially, or story of the universe. And I've always had that sort of like, where, you know, where are the male variants? Like, where, where are they? Because they've been mentioned in the Ultima uh, book for that game. Is it called the Ultima book? I'm not sure. I should have pulled up a resources list for this. But that's where I found out about them. And I was like, ooh, okay. Well, let's, let's see. Where are they? Is there any art available? And then there was, there was absolutely none. And this was stuff I already knew before Final Fantasy XIV. So originally in Heaven's Ward, there were rumors around at the time that Viera were going to be the thing that was going to be added. And it wasn't eventually. It wasn't. And they also, uh, during some interview or some sort of panel revealed that there was actually art already made. And when they showed like the male Viera art along with the female Viera art at the time, I was so excited and so disappointed. Aura are fine, right? And it, 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 it made sense because the main thing, the main reason why they didn't add Viera back then, according to what they said, is that thematically it just didn't make much sense. And it was kind of hard to write into lore as well, which is true. It was very difficult because Ivalice started to make sense to be added in um, in Stormblood, and it made sense in that aspect. But in terms of like, hey, we have a lot of cold stuff, snow, dragons, all that kind of stuff, but we're also going to fit Ivalice in there. No, that that did, that did not make sense whatsoever. So, for them not adding it in Heaven's Word, I understood. So now that we finally got them, I was so disappointed to learn that they didn't include the male variants because finally we were going to get a, a a peek at it. And same with Hrothgar, I was very sad that we didn't get the female Hrothgar straight away because we know they exist. I think we've even seen like one or two in uh, in Final Fantasy X. I haven't said, I haven't played X too, by the way, um, or not thoroughly. That was way, way, way ago, like when I was a child. So. Hrothgar I wanted, Melvier I wanted, um, got neither of those. So now that they're finally going to add both at their own pace, granted, right? It's not going to be immediate, but at their own pace, they're finally going to add them. I, I've realized that they're not going to be confirmed lore. Right, just because they're in Final Fantasy XIV does not mean that the next Ivalice game, if we're ever going to get one, um, is going to have male Viera 
at all displayed. And e even then, the creator of the universe has said like, okay, well, yeah, I like the Milviera. Granted, it's not how the way that I imagined them. I was like, okay, well, it's kind of kind of makes sense. You know, it's not by your vision. They made it. Um, they ran it by you, but it's not by your vision and you did approve it. So it's not even a canonical look yet. It's not even canon that they're <laughs> finally there. So I'm going to be super excited for Mil Vieira uh, to finally get a glimpse, to finally get to play them. Um, I've got a couple of surprises with Mil Vieira uh, that I'm currently still working on ever so slightly, but a lot of things are getting in the way. And I don't know how much I'll be using it because it's something that <laughs> I ordered back in January. Uh, but it's a VTuber rig um, for a Milviera. I've got it done. It's got. It looks very shiny. It looks very pretty. Uh, but I don't know how much I'll use it because I don't stream that much anymore. And plus, with my uh, college life, I don't really get to have much time off for myself, which is um, the, the biggest contributor to being able to stream on a regular schedule. And I kind of like my weekends being free. So that's it's it's more so if the mood catches me type stuff. Um, Aside from that, jobs we've covered, races we've covered, story we've covered. Some of the job changes have me a little bit wary. Like, I'm a little bit wary for the bar changes. Um, I don't know about you, but the increased song length kind of has me a little bit. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, okay, but we, <laughs> it, it, it's very difficult to explain. I'm very careful with my excitement, at least on that front. Um, and yeah, the only other thing that I'm really, really excited about is what next, because 6.0 is going to be released. We're going to get 6.1 at some point in the future. What's it going to entail? The raids, what are they going to hold? Treasure maps, what are they about? You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, I'm rarely excited about, um, about Endwalker. Um, I would have loved to have been able to play it now uh, and start leveling, but, you know, early access is uh, next week, around Friday, which is nice. Um, aside from that, Shadowbringers, very, very good experience. But what it initially brought me back to the game with, I kind of lost as well towards the end it wasn't super super gripping it wasn't super super like whoa wow you know what i mean like i kind of felt more of the same kind of i also don't like Xenos as a villain so it's 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 not gripping me um so the fact that that's what we're building to towards the end of shadowbringers and now towards endwalker uh you know it's there it's there i can't change it um, I'm, I'm sure there are people who like these characters. That, pff, judging by social media, a lot of people like these characters in different ways and for different reasons. But yeah, in any case, that's sort of my last ramble, ramble about Shadowbringers and going towards Endwalker. I'll be honest, this is... I wouldn't say the least excited. Shadow, like Stormblood was kind of eh. But I wouldn't say I'm, this is the least excited that I've ever been. It's just that my the things that I really, really, really want are a race and a job, and the rest is just extra. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I can't particularly say that this is the most excited I've ever been about an expansion. I might. I, I'm, I know I'm in the minority for this. I know that there's people who are like, "Wow, how could you say that? You play Final Fantasy. You make videos. You're supposed to advertise this to us." Uh, yeah, I'm technically I'm supposed to if I'm going to be a forerunner, but I'm also going to not lie. In any case, or forerunner. <laughs> Am I one of the enemies for uh, from Halo now? I'm supposed to be an advertisement board essentially for the, for this game, but you know, um, I'll be adding this in for the people that have been listening so far. At least you're the ones that are going to be caring uh, the most about this part. So, content creation. How much is that going to be happening? To be entirely honest, I don't know. I love making videos and I love being able to add to my channel and I love entertaining people. That's all handy dandy, but at this point, um, I'm also doing commissions a lot more with my free time and my creative time, essentially. And that had I almost bit my tongue there. I don't know if you heard a click. <laughs> 
Um, but it's 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 getting difficult to do that with the time I need to spend at school and my internship along the way and the free time that I do have. I spend on commissions, and if I don't want to spend time on commissions, I just want to hang out with friends. I might stream what I do in the game and playing with friends and then make highlight videos of them, but I don't want to turn into that YouTuber that's just like, here's some Twitch highlights, you know what I mean? Like, I don't like that. Nobody likes that. Well, okay, there's a couple of people that like that, but <laughs> that's not me. I don't like that. So. I don't know what the future holds for, for me in this channel uh, or in this format. Uh, I'm sorry if that disappoints a couple of people that I don't immediately uh, have something to say about that regard, but in any case, um, I might do a you laugh, you lose at some point. And for every laugh that I have, I will be donating 100k towards random people every single time. <laughs> oh boy. In any case, um, I want to thank you very much for listening. You've heard me speak and ramble about the expansion now for quite a bit. What are your thoughts? How do you feel about this? Let me know down below. Um, if you've come this far, why don't you put something in the comment to let me know that you've come this far? How about we include the word blue? Yeah, we'll go with blue because I'm listening to a song called Pale Blue Dot. So we'll go with blue. If you've come this far into the video, Put the word blue somewhere in your comment. I don't know how you're going to include them, but you know what? That's not my responsibility. In any case, thank you very much for coming this far. And I will hopefully see you very, very soon. Later. Later.